there, it's Lori Pierce again from Taylor Mill, Kentucky, which is the greater Cincinnati tri-state area. Thanks so much for having me. I love participating in this contest and using one of my favorite ingre ingredients, Philadelphia cream cheese in all its forms. I developed this recipe for people who are uncomfortable with risotto and the time that it takes, uh, the, the love that you need to express while you're stirring and stirring and stirring and gently pouring in your broth and coating your rice beforehand. This recipe uses regular rice. You can use any kind you want except for anything that says converted because that means that the starch layer has been removed and we want the starch. I prefer jasmine rice because it has a wonderful aroma. This recipe also incorporates an old Italian recipe, the idea of it, called Risi Abisi, which is a spring dish where they go to a lot of trouble to haul the peas and they take the pods and make the broth out of the pea pods and then they make the risotto and it's very, very liquidy, almost a soup, and incorporate the fresh peas. I call this recipe my spring faux risotto because you don't have to go to all that work. You don't have to be uh, intimidated by the process of making a real risotto with arborio rice. This recipe, as I said, uses jasmine rice. It uses peas. I'm throwing in frozen peas. I adore frozen peas because they're picked fresh and thrown into a freezer and they don't lose any of their fresh sweetness and they don't gain starch that fresh peas gain when they're shipped and put into your supermarket. With the uh, rice and the peas, we have a base of onions and butter, which we're going to saute, and then we throw in a little white wine and reduce that. Then we throw in some chicken broth, and uh, we throw in our rice, and we let it go for a few minutes, and then we stir in our star ingredient, the Philadelphia cream cheese. We finish it up, and we garnish with some Asiago cheese or Parm Parmesan cheese. Today I'm using a freshly grated Asiago and some chives. So let's get to work, okay? I'm coming over to the stove. I am turning it on and this is only going to take a second. I'm going to throw in my butter and I'm going to throw in my onions. And we're going to saute them just until they're soft. You'd be surprised. That doesn't take very long. And I'm a big fan of pan shaking. Sorry if that was cacophonous. I am now going to throw in about, oh, I don't know, a quarter cup of white wine, and we're going to let that just burn off. Probably a bad choice of words. That is reducing. I'm going to stir my chicken broth a little bit. This is a regular chicken broth. You can use low sodium and just add your salt to taste. The cream cheese, of course, adds a lovely saltiness. Yep, we've lost almost half of it. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this process and put in my chicken broth. Cut. Okay, we're back. It's been about 12 minutes. The rice is ready. It's a little al dente, and since we're going to add so many other ingredients, it still has time to cook through a little more. To approximate the bite of the risotto, we don't want this rice really, really soft. So I'm going to take this off. And I do need to let you know that I forgot an ingredient and I went ahead and added it while we were on the break. It's uh, about the juice of a half a lemon that you throw in after you throw in your chicken broth. We're just going to stir this up. You can see it's still at the simmer and there's still a little bit of liquid left. It's now time to dump in our cream cheese, which I will break into quarters and then we'll stir through. We're also going to dump in our peas. Doesn't matter if they're still frozen at all. And about a tablespoon of chopped chive. All done. Now all we have to do is stir this through until it's incorporated and the peas are warmed up. See how creamy that's getting already? And the cheese isn't even halfway melted. Mm -mm -mm. 
When you look at the recipe, you're going to see that it's not a traditional ratio of liquid to rice. Um, and that's one more reason uh, how we're approximating the texture and consistency of risotto. Even now, with all of the liquid that I used and all of the cream cheese, I think I'm going to go ahead and add just a tad more water. About an eighth of a cup tablespoon or two. And that's going to help get this cream cheese incorporated. Yeah, see, you just never know what's going to be exactly right until you're in the thick of it. Look at that. Oh my gosh. That is so creamy. Ooh, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Now, we're done. I'm going to go ahead and put this in a bowl. I'm going to garnish it with some freshly grated Parmesan cheese and a couple of chive sprigs. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Let's plate this bad boy up. Faux spring risotto. Look how creamy that is. Oh my gosh. Now, a little sprinkle of Parmesan and some beautiful chives right on top. Good enough for me, because I know how good it tastes. <laughs> I think I'm going to take some right now. Don't tell anybody that I snatched it out of the serving bowl, okay? Mmm. Mmm, the acid, the lemon juice and the white wine, the creaminess of the cheese, the sweetness of the peas, that's really the kicker. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do.